And we are here with uh, Hadley Abentroff, officer of Hillsboro FFA. And uh, Adley, it's a it's a, a National FFA Week, and I guess uh, just what are you guys uh, doing over at the Hillsboro School District to celebrate? Um, well, me and another girl are going over to uh, do some livestock judging on Saturday. And I mean, that's really just trying to get people involved in FFA. Okay. How about, uh, tell us a little bit about your, your uh, FFA profile. How long have you been in FFA? What made you want to join? Just kind of different information like that. Um, I just started FFA this year. Um, my mom was always in FFA, and so she wanted me to be in it. And then I've just been, I've been off, been an officer for Parley Pro and then just doing like the livestock judging and we'll go to state in March. So. Awesome. Do you have any like a goal set in place this year for uh, FFA that you wanted to uh, accomplish? Um, Just do good in like my livestock judging and be like, I don't know, top 50 try to okay. just that's been my biggest goal is to do good in livestock judging. You know, what are some things that FFA has taught you in your first year? Um, I've met a lot of friends and it's responsibilities. It's actually taught me a lot. Um, yeah, basically responsibilities and like, yeah. Okay. I know it's, as you mentioned, it's only your first year, but uh, have you had like a favorite memory that has uh, happened so far? Definitely going and going to the last like dungeon in Fargo and like, afterwards like just the relief of because i was a little nervous but okay um uh, do you have uh, plans after high school has a uh, have or um, do you know what your plans are after high school i should say are you pr maybe pursuing a career in agriculture yeah i definitely want to work for or my mom works for like the usda and i definitely i'm very interested in that and i want to do base my career around agriculture so definitely do you have an idea of like a certain area of study yet or not? Not quite. Not quite. Okay. Eyeing up any particular school? Um, no, I've NDSU or SDSU I've looked at and I've really enjoyed that for like the livestock program and yeah. Perfect. And uh, what are some reasons that uh, people should join FFA? I know like you mentioned, like we've mentioned before that it's your first year and, uh, but overall, if, uh, you are a leader in your FFA chapter. Just overall, what, what do you tell kids uh, when they're interested in FFA? Uh, what do you say to them to get them to join? There's so many new opportunities to do, and you meet so many different friends, and there's a lot that you can do. There's so many different areas. It's not just with the animals. or There's so many different areas that you can go into, and it's, yeah, you meet a lot of people, and it's just, it helps you in your overall life career. Okay. Um. I know you mentioned uh, some of your uh, individual events, but uh, what are some things that your chapter as a whole are working on? Or do you guys have any like community projects or anything like that coming up? Um, I think we did do the Harley Pro, but I don't think I have. We haven't really focused on any uh, community projects yet. I think we're just trying to get into it this year. We haven't had a, a lot of people in FFA lately, so now we're finally getting it back up and going. So it's been little bit tricky to like find places to do so okay awesome and i guess uh, hadley before we get going was there anything else you wanted to share about uh, ffa or national ffa week i just think to encourage more people to join ffa it's a great opportunity for people so well perfect uh, thank you for your time here today adley hadley thank you and we are here with uh, mackenzie batasic of uh, Ada or not Ada Borup West, the uh, Hillsboro Central Valley FFA. And uh, Mackenzie, uh, just overall, uh, how long have you been in FFA and uh, what made you want to join FFA when you first started? Um, this is my first year in FFA. It's really the first year that our school actually has a program again. So, like me and Hadley, we've really been trying to get our program back and up and going again. So, this is my first year, but I've been around agriculture all my life and my dad he used to be our old FFA advisor and like my cousins are all in FFA and just the experiences that they have had and all like the fun stuff they say it just really like made me want to join and get our program 
up and going again. And uh, why was this a program that you felt uh, was important to kind of kickstart and, and uh, reboot over at Hillsboro? Because FFA teaches you so many valuable life lessons. It teaches you like a good work ethic, um, like responsibility, um, just so many different things about like being on time or just valuable life skills. And that FFA, it can do so much for you. And so I feel like it's important that students know about it and it, there's an opportunity for them to join FFA because it can help them in the long run. And uh, you mentioned, and as we've mentioned, you're kind of a chapter officer and just a, what are some ways that uh, you guys are kind of looking to expand your, uh, your program? Uh, what are some ways that you're recruiting uh, students to join your organization? Um, just by telling people about it and encouraging them to come out and try new things. And like Hadley said, there there's so much more. There's so many different categories in FFA. Like you don't have to be about livestock judging or crops. Like or when you at the state FFA, FFA convention, there's like this dairy contest where you try like all these different cheeses and milks and like try to guess which one's which. And just all these different fun opportunities that FFA provides you. And so just by like telling people about them and letting them know like, hey, like you don't have to be a country kid or this or that, like, just try it. If, if There's so many different things that it may interest you. And so just letting them know about it, letting them know about it and just telling them, like, that, yeah. And uh, continuing with that, what are some maybe non, like, egg-related skills that you have uh, learned in this uh, first year of FFA? Well, definitely, like, the social, like, socializing and like, because you meet so many different people. And so for like livestock judging, your group gets, there's a bunch of different groups and they, you're not with anyone from your chapter. So like, you're not supposed to talk during it, but after when you're just sitting there, you're going to have to socialize or it's just going to be awkward. So it teaches you how to like socialize with other people and step out of your comfort zone and just, yeah. Awesome. And overall, just how is how have you felt the the first year of the program? I guess, I shouldn't say first year of the program, but first year back with this uh, pro or with this uh, program. Uh, how do you feel it's gone so far? I feel like it has gone really well. Like because this year is just a building year, so we're just trying to go to like the basic things and just getting more people and more people out and encouraging more people to join. And it has been really fun with the group of people we have right now. Like the bus rides and car rides on the way to events or the early mornings are so fun. We're all nervous on the way there. And then on the way back, we're laughing because we had no reason to be nervous and just talking about the day. And so that has been really fun. Perfect. And uh, what are some things that you're working on as an individual and some things you're working on as a chapter? Um, I've been working on livestock judging. And then as a chapter, we're just doing the basics, just trying to, and getting more people to come out, but and just learning all about what FFA really is and all it can do for you. Now, livestock judging, tell us a little bit about that, uh, what that is maybe for our listeners who aren't too familiar with it. So you get like, it's typically four animals and in a pen and there's people showing them and the judge will say go or whatever and he'll put a timer on timer up and you have, like when we went to Little Eye, we had 12 minutes to write down to place the four animals which one we thought was the best and then we would write down our reasons and after we were all done with that we'd go back and read our reasons to a judge do you have like a certain animal that you like showing more than the others well we don't show them we get to like judge them oh okay. but i i don't know i like judging cows just because i have cows and <laughs> so it's easier but how about uh, post high school plans? Do you have any kind of uh, plans yet as uh, maybe a career in agriculture or anything like that? Um, I was looking in like, to, I've always thought about being like an equine vet or like going into equine reproduction, which I've always thought that would be kind of cool to do. But I definitely want to base my career off agriculture and stay in the agriculture, agricultural world and do something along that lines. Awesome. Well, Mackenzie, was there anything else that you wanted to say about uh, Hillsboro FFA or FFA as an organization in whole or just anyone you wanted to shout out? Um, I just think that everyone should at least give FFA a try because 
it gives you like you can get grants and it looks good on your scholarships and your resumes and stuff and it's just a great uh, or great association to be a part of perfect well uh, Mackenzie, i appreciate your time here today and uh, good luck with uh, running the organization going forward thank you and we are here with uh, Devin, Devin Du Bois uh, from Hillsboro FFA. And uh, Devin, I know you were telling us off the camera that you just uh, just uh, uh, got a scholarship through uh, FFA. And I guess you want to tell us a little bit about that. Um, he, I think my advisor actually meant to say grant. It wasn't a scholarship. Uh, it was a grant that I got for cattle. Um, and it's helped a lot with uh, I applied for a loan on top of that grant. So it's helped a lot to support the cattle that I've bought. Awesome. And uh, what kind of cattle do you raise? Are you like a dairy? Are you a, or do you raise for just a hamburger? Like what, uh, what do you, uh, uh, what do you do? I'm raising beef cattle. Uh, I'm trying to keep my herd kind of red. So I have red Angus and her food. Uh, I've thought about Charolais, but uh, my herd's still small, uh, but I'm working on growing it. So. Awesome. And is this, uh, is cattle something you kind of want to do after high school? Work in, a, work in the cattle industry? Yeah, I just recently got into cattle this year, uh, but it's proven to be a pretty good uh, business to get into right about now. So I think I will stick with it and probably start running a ranch. Okay. <laughs> what What is it about uh, cattle that you enjoy uh, working with? Well, when I, uh, I always grew up butchering cattle. So um, I always wanted to uh, continue that uh, through the next generations. So I've uh, needed to get into cattle to do that. But uh, the market is really good right now, and it's making me a lot of money. So it seems like I could be very successful in it. And uh, who has been helping you with, uh, with this kind of cattle business you've been running? Well, um, my parents have been very supportive, uh, but my friend uh, Taylor Manthe, he has cattle, and he is kind of the one who got me into it. Uh, he more he kind of helped me out with it, getting it started. But now that it's started, it's kind of a partnership between me and him. We're both trying to expand our herds. <laughs> Okay. And uh, how about some uh, FFA? Are you doing any like a uh, cattle type events uh, through FFA? Yeah, I'm doing cattle judging with uh, the rest of my uh, group. And <clears throat> I've thought about getting into uh, crop judging too, maybe. But I think I I most likely will definitely stick with cattle judging. Perfect. And what are some, uh, uh, have you picked up any any like uh, knowledge or skills uh, kind of through FFA that'll help you with that uh, cattle uh, and livestock uh, field moving forward? Uh, yes. Um, just being able to judge the cattle and know what to look for in the cow has really helped me. I went to a livestock auction last weekend and I got really good deals on a lot of cows because I just knew what to look for because of livestock judging. Awesome. And uh, so far uh, this year, it's a uh, first year of uh, FFA for uh, Hillsboro. Just overall, how have you yeah. felt the year has uh, gone so far? Well, I think I've been pretty successful in it. I got this grant and I've already uh, started uh, competing in these contests and stuff. So it's helped me out a lot. Uh, what year of a school are you in, Devin? Uh, ninth grade. Okay. So uh, obviously a very young student, uh, go, uh, obviously a very young program and uh, you haven't been, I mean, uh, freshman year, uh, just overall, uh, what are some long-term goals you have uh, for uh, FFA going in, going into the future? Well, I hope to become like a bigger role, kind of, you know, go to more events and stuff and just uh, get more into it and learn more so I can have more livestock. Awesome. And uh, coming up, uh, do you have any uh, livestock events uh, coming up soon? Uh, we might have one this weekend in Lisbon that uh, I might go to. I might be busy, but um, it's a cattle judging contest. Perfect. And I guess, uh, Devin, just one final question for you is, is just uh, if uh, if you hear if you 
So a person who's interested in joining FFA, uh, how would you uh, kind of sell FFA to them to kind of get them to uh, join? Uh, what are some benefits that you've came uh, that you that you've uh, had from it, and maybe benefits another person who joined the organization could get? Well, I would definitely tell them about the grant that I received. A lot of people are interested about that when I got it, um, and I would tell them about how much it's helped me learn about cattle, <clears throat> but. Yeah, it's something that would can really help a younger person get a business started. So I would definitely tell them about that. Awesome. Devin, was there anything else you wanted to share about uh, Hillsborough FFA, uh, FFA as a, just as a whole organization, or just maybe someone you wanted to shout out to? Uh, shout out? Uh, not that I can think of, no. Perfect. Well, uh, thank you for your time here today, Devin. Yeah, thank you. That was uh, Devin Du Bois of uh, Hillsborough FFA. On our special FFA chapter series on yourliveevent.com, FFA Week, we're talking with three senior FFA members at Hope Page. Uh, we're talking with uh, Emma, Esther, and Lily. And uh, uh, ladies, uh, that's from right to left, uh, as you see on your screen. And uh, ladies, why don't you introduce yourselves to our Your Live Event audience uh, and uh, kind of what your uh, go-to activity or, or favorite thing that FFA is to do. Uh, my name is Emma Thompson. I'm a senior. I'm the chapter reporter. And my favorite thing to do in FFA is the state convention, um, where I do uh, the ag and farm business uh, CDE, as well as ag communications. I'm Esther Steinke. I'm our chapter vice president. I'm also a senior. And my favorite is probably ag sales. I'm Lily Kana. I'm the chapter president. I'm also a senior. Um, my favorite part about FFA is so, um, the teamwork aspect and competing. I compete in uh, egg communications and floriculture. Yeah, fantastic, ladies. And uh, while we are uh, we have you all in a row, and since we have three here, we'll just kind of uh, keep going uh, down the line individually. Uh, uh, what got you interested in FFA? Was it an uh, individual? Was it a teacher? Was it an activity? Kind of why did you guys start with FFA? Well, the first year we got FFA, we were freshmen. And it was kind of a sticky situation for us because some of us were enrolled in a Phi Ed class that was the same hour as the only ag class available for us. So Lily and I did not take uh, ag the first year we were in Phi Ed. But then the second year, after hearing these rave reviews from everybody saying how fun the class was and how awesome the teacher miss went is, we all decided to join when we were sophomores. I actually was the first member to compete in a Hope Page FFA event. So that was kind of nerve wracking, but really exciting. I was in an intro to agriculture class and our teacher, Miss Went, got me into a green hand agriculture quiz. And ever since then, I just loved it. Oh. Yeah, so as Emma said, I didn't join FFA and join an egg class until my sophomore year. I had actually never really been interested in taking an egg class or really FFA. I kind of had this fixed mindset of what agriculture was. But after freshman year and how everyone talked about these awesome opportunities, I decided to look more into it. And I realized um, how broad the agriculture field is and how much more it is than just farming. And I'm so glad that I took that step and looked more into it and got involved. Awesome. Awesome. Now, uh, uh, I'm always amazed by how much there is in FFA. It's not just, oh, go to a farm for a day and, and see how things work. Uh, uh, there's so many components, and you ladies mentioned uh, a bunch of them. What are maybe some of the uh, FFA components that uh, you do that's unique to Hope Page or that maybe the average person wouldn't think about? We do a lot of community aspects when it comes to FFA. So we get to volunteer in our communities a lot. And especially during FFA week, we get to do a lot of things that aren't necessarily competitive throughout the state, but they're just for our school. So this week we're doing a glow in the, bar glow in the dark dodgeball tournament. So that's really fun. We get to show what FFA is and get other members to join. And we're also doing a cornhole tournament. So there are some more fun aspects that aren't just competitions. And I imagine that yep. there's some community service involved in that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Awesome. Uh, so what what particular uh, keep going on the community service aspect? Uh, like, do you um, have fundraisers that contribute to organizations, or, or do you help uh, out uh, directly by using your own two hands and feet? Good. Well, we do lots of different fundraisers. Um, the kind of main fundraiser that we do every January is our pizza fundraiser. So this, all the proceeds go to the people or the members who sell the pizzas. We sell Ole and Lena brand different uh, food items. And we do fundraisers like that for our ourselves and getting money for our chapter. But we also like to give back a lot to our communities. We're a very, very new chapter. So when we're just starting out like this, our community is our backbone and it's the only reason that we could to do these things like this. So giving back is a huge part of our chapter. One thing we do for that is during harvest time, we do farmer appreciation bags. So we get together a bunch of goodies and we bring them out to our farmers during harvest to just say thank you for always supporting us. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, of course, I uh, got to give thanks to your uh, chapter advisor, uh, Ms. Sarah Wendt, for setting this all up. Uh, what have you learned from Sarah and maybe the rest of the ag educators you've met uh, either at Hope Page or, or around the state doing FFA? What have you learned the most? Well, from her, we've learned the most that FFA and ag isn't just farming. That's one of the main things she like teaches us, um, that it's more than just farmers in a field. It can do like with our CD, which is ag communications, which we do like mock, mock press conferences, which still is related to ag, but it's not exactly farming. Um, so she's just brought in our horizon so much to all that agriculture involves that isn't just farming. And she is so dedicated to her students. She's shown us that with hard work, you can get where you want to go. Um, in ag communications, we get to advocate for agriculture through FFA. So that's something that has been a real passion project for us. One thing about her that I have just particularly noticed is she is so motivating. And, and again, with us not being in FFA when it was first starting out, um, whenever I had any questions, I know that me and Emma actually couldn't get into the intro to egg class, which is technically the first level, but she able she was able to switch some things around and we got into a foundations of egg class. So we kind of cut a little corner there, yeah. but in any CDE or event that we want to do, she's she pushes us out of our comfort zone, but she's always there to support us. And she just goes like the extra mile. She writes us little encouraging notes before competitions and she sets up practices and has pizza. It's, she just amazes me like that. And to add on from Lily, I was the first one to compete in the farm and agribusiness management CDE. And she knew absolutely nothing about it. And that CDE can be very complicated. It has to do with money, taxes, how to run a farm, um, like through money and all that stuff. And she actually reached out to a lot of people and that helped me to get a very good score my first year. So, One of my favorite things about high school is that uh, it uh, allows you the opportunity to have lots of different experiences and to maybe see what you want to do for the rest of your life. Uh, uh, I imagine uh, that maybe this experience has, has changed your outlook on, on what you want to do for your career or your passions. Kind of share a little bit about that, about what's next for you uh, three seniors. Actually doing the farm and agribusiness management CDE decided what I wanted to do for my career. I'm actually going to college for agribusiness management. So that CDE really changed my view about what I want to spend my future doing. And I'm really grateful for that. I also found my future career through a CDE at the state convention. There's ag communications. And that's what I decided I want to go to college for. So I'm going to college for ag communications to be an advocate for agriculture. Um, kind of what Esther said, I also did ag communications and it, I am not exactly sure what my major is going to be yet, but it's going to be in the communications field. I'm looking into public relations, which kind of goes hand in hand with communications. And yeah, it's just a real life example of how something that you may be doing for fun or to put yourself out there can actually fine tune and help you figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life. 
Uh, ladies, uh, anything else you want to mention to our, our viewers here on the FFA Chapter Show or any words of wisdom for any future FFA members? Don't be scared. Just join. Yeah. Try everything you can. Yeah. Really put yourself out there and get outside of your comfort zone. You'll never know where it could take you. Yeah. It teaches you so much that you won't even know. I mean, yes, you'll learn more about agriculture in the field, but I mean, you'll develop confidence, you'll develop public uh, speaking skills, you'll become more comfortable stepping outside of your comfort zone. I just think it's so important to get involved. Don't be afraid to get involved just because maybe your friends aren't doing it. You're never going to look back in 10 years and say, wow, I wish I never had gotten involved. If anything, it's going to be the complete opposite. And you're going to wish that you would have um, gotten involved in these type, uh, sorts of apps organizations and not to mention us just being officers has opened a lot of opportunities for us um, whether that be through leadership skills uh, running the chapter running chapter meetings on committees planning things and also scholarships and good good things to add to our resume so join ffa <laughs> yeah it's great <laughs> Well, I tell you what, ladies, impressed. Uh, 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 three uh, outstanding representatives, just uh, uh, part of uh, uh, the uh, awesome kids involved in FFA and our FFA chapter show. Hope Page talking with three seniors, Emma, Esther, and Lily. Thanks for joining us, uh, and uh, best of luck in your future in the agriculture industry. Thank, Thank you so much. And we are here with uh, the Northern Cass FFA. It would be advisor Lucas Schmaltz and uh, Jenea Volk, who is a member of the Northern Cass FFA. And uh, Jenea, you just want to tell us a little bit about uh, your background uh, with FFA. How long have you been in the organization? What made you want to join? Just kind of basic information like that. Uh, so I've been in FFA for two years, starting at high school. I'm a sophomore now. And I kind of wanted to join because my older brother was in it and he told me how fun it would be. And I kind of already have seen it before, like within my other cousins. So I wanted to join because of them. And I'm glad I did. It's fun. And kind of the family business. <laughs> yeah, because everyone's kind of a farm mean like family and my family and stuff. Awesome. And what's been a favorite memory you've had with uh, Northern Cast FFA so far? Probably our egg day last year where we got to bring like some animals in, some of us did, and then people brought in machinery and we did like different projects with plant science and like animal science and everything. And we had like all of our school come out during the day and come look at it. And it was just fun showing that. So are you guys celebrating National FFA Week by doing anything? Um, in Mar or like April or March in springtime, we're going to do another egg day or like that it's just we are waiting so it's not as wet outside and like i guess there's not really any snow but <laughs> just wet and stuff yeah. you know what are some uh, i guess uh like skills you've picked up in your in your two years of being in ffa what are some new skills you've learned and what are some you've improved on throughout the throughout the years definitely like communication and leadership because you have to kind of communicate with like your team members on different projects and like if you're on the like board of it like if you're a reporter because that's what i am um you kind of have to communicate with like those people the president and stuff and learn stuff like that and it, definitely leadership learn like teaching how to lead other members who may who may have just joined this year it's like kind of fun doing that Awesome. And I'll include a Lucas in this question here. Uh, just what are some, why, why should a student to join FFA? What are some skills to be learned? What are some things to be learned, I should say? And uh, what, what is the ultimate benefit to being involved in an FFA uh, chapter? Do you want to answer anything? You want me to take that? You can answer Okay. Uh, yeah. I, um, I think honestly, the, uh, being able to be a little bit outgoing and outside of your comfort zone is a huge part of the organization. Uh, it does take a uh, progress to be able to leap, and it's outside of a lot of people. Um, you end up being able to interact and mingle, and I think that's one that as a newer restart to uh, having the FFA chapter, I was actually the first advisor here at Northern Cass um, back in 2013 when we started, and I was here for three years and then left for six and um, in that process, we kind of kept it going and then it fell down and now we're uh, building back up again. But I think it gives a real cool opportunity. And um, I've actually tried to incorporate a lot of our um, 
class projects into being able to give them the option to come with and compete to be able to see it. And we've gotten some um, some good feedback from that. And I think that it's a way that using the skills from class in a real world experience is a great way to prepare people not only for future careers, but even just life in general, having knowledge of um, outside and where uh, where you can apply some of those skills that you don't normally see and use every day. And uh, how many members do you have in a Northern Cast F FFA? Uh, right now, we currently, um, over throughout the semester, um, I have every learner enrolled um, at our school. So we have 160 members, but we're probably down to about 15 to 20 active members throughout the course of the year. Okay. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about the projects you guys are working on over both as a chapter as a whole and as an individual, maybe some of the uh, projects and events that you guys are competing in? Uh, so, <clears throat> as um, an individual for me, for my Egg 3 class last semester, we did where we combined animal science and plant science and made that, or we could do it separately, but I combined both of mine and I based it off animal nutrition and like the different uh, crops and like kind of plants that are benefited or like that benefit for animal production, like better to get a better profit. And then I know some other people kind of do like welding projects, woodworking projects, or kind of just like variety. So everyone doesn't do the same, but if they want to, they could. And we kind of just go to just a bunch of like different competitions, like livestock judging, agronomy, um, like crop judging and stuff. So we kind of all do variety. So it's, we learn off of each other from our different projects. And uh, how about uh, things your uh, chapter as a whole are working on? Do you guys do you guys have any like events or anything else like that uh, coming up? We're uh, planning on once again doing Egg Day. Um, and with that, uh, it we are hoping to uh, put that together. We're kind of going to get into the planning stages of that and hopefully actually doing it on National Egg Day this year if possible. And spring's looking like it's right around the corner up in our area. So that will be one that um, as we go through, it'll be um, interesting. The other thing is, is um, this year we're going to, I'm going to incorporate a couple of classes into doing um, some, we're going to start some plants for doing kind of a just small fundraiser. We didn't do a fundraiser last year, um, but using our greenhouse to be able to produce some potato plants and um, other vegetables and some flower arrangements and things like that for people to have as a um, class project and going through there. So say I think you mentioned springs right around the corner, but I was about to say looking outside, I think it's here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true. I, I I don't know. We're we're gonna get back down to thirty tomorrow, so I'm not sure where you're located at, but that'll be one. And it's been pretty frosty every morning here, so we're below twenty when we wake up, and then we're up to fifty. I think it's supposed to hit today, if I remember right. So. Awesome. And uh, Jenea, I guess uh, just what are, do you have any plans after high school yet? I know you mentioned you're still only a sophomore, but uh, has like FFA maybe opened an opportunity to a career in ag after you graduate? Um, yeah, so I'm also in 4-H. So those two, like I love animals. That's what I love doing. And that's my passion. So I plan on going um, into like veterinary school or, and do some animal science like within that and Kind of. I just want to go to kind of NDSU because that's where my two older siblings went and they both graduated from there. So I kind of wanted to go where they went. And also because I want to work at the egg barns because I know all the owners of each building and stuff. And I already know them. So it's kind of fun to work with people, you know, and stuff like that. And I've always just wanted to be a vet because I always love helping animals. And uh, as a, just an individual, do you kind of have like an FFA career goal? Like, is there some sort of like milestone you want to reach? Like, do you want to maybe get, uh, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, or do you like want to go to like the national convention? Uh, you want to get to a certain point in state? Like, do you have like an ultimate uh, goal as a member in FFA? Um, like my goal, like definitely is to continue it through it without the rest of high school, definitely. And like use it for college. Cause I know that college gives a lot of scholarships within FFA and 4-H. And that's like my goal is to hopefully get a scholarship one day for FFA and 4-H to show that to younger kids who are in egg culture that they could do that. You know, Lucas, how about uh, just uh, as the as an advisor, what do you kind of have like a chapter goal that you kind of want to reach? 
you know, I think our real uh, goal as for, from an advisor aspect is to mainly get um, involvement keeping going. Um, it's a little bit different here at Northern Cass. I'm set up on semester-based classes. So with that, it's hard to have learners for an entire year. And so with that, it ebb and flows quite often. But um, currently right now, I'm really happy to have, uh, we have about four, uh, four to five consistent livestock judges. So we have a team there and I have an individual in egg sales and a few that have tried out other things. And I've actually had some younger learners show some interest in next year. They're just too busy this year and getting rides and things like that is a little bit harder to do that. But um, overall, as a whole, I would like to see, I mean, 50% of the learners compete in two to three events uh, throughout the school year or uh, going in. Last year, I know Jenea and one other learner uh, who was a senior, our president last year, Hannah, they attended uh, state convention. Jenea came for the dairy cattle judging. It was a part of the um, delegate process that uh, she volunteered to do that and uh, was able to be um, a part of that. So that's where I'm just hoping that um, showcasing it and um really making sure but if anything i'm incorporating and giving them the opportunity to see it and i'm hoping that a few more follow through and um you know trying to communicate with parents as much as possible because their encouragement assists as well in uh getting membership and things like that like Jenea is one of our executive team this year we weren't able to slate a full slate of officers in our chapter this year so um she and uh three other individuals are kind of our team leads that uh we go through so we didn't get to um compete in some of those events that are chapter team related. Um, but we have some great leaders and uh, growing continuously with how that is. And it's just hoping to keep that flow going. So. Awesome. And I guess, uh, was there anything else you guys wanted to uh, share with our, our viewers uh, at uh, home uh, before we get going? I just would like to wish all advisors and members a happy National FFA Week. And I want to thank you for your time, Preston. It was great uh, to be able to do this and uh, appreciate you taking your time. And uh, do you guys have like a social media or anything like that that our viewers can uh, follow you guys on? Uh, mostly it's just our Northern Cast School uh, has a Facebook page and uh, as well as our website. And I do send updates uh, of that. I got a little bit behind this last month in uh, sending pictures and things like that. But that would be one that uh, northerncastschool.com. And then otherwise find us on Facebook page, the Northern Cast Jaguars. Well, per perfect. Uh, Lucas and Janae, I appreciate your time here today. And uh, good luck with your uh, the rest of your guys' events this year. Thank, thank, thank you. you.